come back with me from the comfort of your own homes to the late Cretaceous period, a time before mankind when the dinosaurs walked the earth, when monsters ruled the land and sea, before one of the greatest extinctions to have ever faced the earth. Join me to find out what did the Velociraptor really look like. The Velociraptor mongoliensis was a predatory theropod that lived in the late Cretaceous period over 71 million years ago. It gets its name from the Latin words velox, which means swift and speed, and raptor, which means robber and plunderer, as an appropriate description for its agility and carnivorous diet. It was first discovered in Mongolia, East Asia, hence the name, on 11th of August 1923 by Peter Kazin. He stumbled across the complete 25 cm skull and toe claw at the dig site in the Gobi Desert. Throughout the years, we've looked at dinosaurs as upright naked monsters, and the Velociraptors were no different. Now there's a few things I'm going to need to address to get on with the science aspect of this video. The dinosaurs seen in Jurassic Park are not scientifically accurate. We all know this. Everything about this Velociraptor is wrong, from the scaling, the way their hands are shaped and positioned, to the lack of feathers. The Velociraptors in the film, however, are based on the Deinonychus antiropus, a larger species of raptor that range from 4 to 5 feet tall and 11 and a half feet in length. Though the name of this dinosaur was changed by Michael Crichton to Velociraptor in order for the dinosaur to sound more dramatic and frightening almost like something a real theme park would do to excite the guests. At the time Crichton wrote the novel, their recreation of the Deinonychus was indeed scientifically accurate, though it was scaled up just a bit for Spielberg's film to make them a more formidable foe. But throughout the years following the books and films release, we of course learnt a lot more about these fascinating creatures, adding that they did indeed have feathers and their hands weren't positioned with their fingers towards the toes and were instead facing each other like a bird. The raptors seen in Jurassic Park unofficially have more in common with the Achillobator, a species of dromaeosaurid that actually grew up to 6 feet tall like what's seen in the film. Though again, there are a few notable differences, most notably skeletal structure, which isn't quite as accurate as the Deinonychus. Now we have that out of the way, let's talk about the specifics on Velociraptor mongoliensis. This Cretaceous dromaeosaur stood a height of around 3 feet tall, with a length of 6.8 feet from nose to the tip of the tail, with a weight of approximately 20 to 30 pounds significantly smaller than many of you might have expected and hoped it would be. Though don't underestimate this creature, it can still do some damage. With a 3.5 inch retractable claw, its job would have been to trap other dinosaurs and plunge the weapon deep into the throats of larger prey, leaving them to suffocate on their own. Dr. Grant wasn't messing around when he gave that example on what a raptor claw could do to you. The point is, you are alive when they start to and with the Velociraptor's estimated speeds reaching up to 64 kilometers per hour, you wouldn't want to mess with this thing, even if it is smaller than you. And to help with this intense running speed would of course be feathers. Yes, the dreaded feathers that fans of Jurassic Park don't want to hear. Unfortunately, my friend, for small dromaeosaurs like these, they are absolutely covered in feathers, and most likely resembled something very similar to what's found in modern day birds like the stellar sea eagle. These brown spots on this photograph are actually fossilized feathers, and we can see how far they branch out from the skeletal remains. We can also see on Velociraptor's arms that they have small intonations called quill knobs where prominent feathers would have grown. These feathered wings on each arm would have helped with steering, similar to what's found in ostriches running at high speeds. And whilst they did have wings, they couldn't fly or even glide, though it's likely their ancestors could have at some point and nearly evolved to lose this ability. On the topic of feathers, what colorations might we have seen in the Velociraptors? Some have speculated that smaller dromaeosaurs had glossy black feathers like crows, while some have speculated that they're brown and white, a colour found on many eagles, which would have been used to blend into the desert environment of prehistoric Asia. 
though dinosaurs weren't all a drab dark colour. Some specimens that are well preserved can have their colour determined by firing a laser at the fossils which highlight fluorescent materials. And under an electron microscope, scientists were able to confirm the precedes of melanosomes, structures that store pigments in cells and tissue. These allow the scientists to determine the colour some dinosaurs would have been, and for one small theropod called the Cynoceroptrix, they were able to determine that it featured prominently fluffy orange feathers, with stripes of white going down its tail in a similar fashion to that of a lemur, and it featured dark grey or black skin. Certainly a groundbreaking find that pushes our understanding of these magnificent creatures forward, but also opens up a lot of questions for what colour creatures like the Velociraptors really were. The only thing we can really go off are the modern day raptors, the ones bred perfectly for stalking and hunting. Velociraptor most likely had brown and white patches of feathers, colours that would make it blend into the ground and making unexpected assaults easier. So with these inspections taken into account, we can confidently assume the Velociraptor looked something like this, featuring the true skeletal structure of the Velociraptor mongoliensis, showcasing its true size next to an average human male. Or this interpretation by renowned artist Fred Wirum, which also features a brown and white colour palette and wings used for steering at extreme speeds. The Velociraptor is one of the most famous dinosaurs to have ever existed, and it's easy to see why. These fascinating yet terrifying creatures have been seen through many forms of media throughout the years, but nothing quite matches the majesty of nature in its true form. Before I go, I just want to thank you all for helping us reach 100,000 residents. This is a milestone I've only ever dreamed of reaching. And if you're new to the channel, our lovely town of Dangerville welcomes you. This was more of a one-off kind of video because we are heading into Godzilla season, but if enough people want to see more, we might bring the series back. So show your support by liking this video, subscribing, and leaving a comment on what dinosaur you'd like to see next. I've been Alistair from Dangerville, and residents, thank you for watching.